My name is Francis Stu, and I am a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College in Southern California. When I was a kid, I, I would say I was always interested in mathematics. And, uh, you know, after a while, when you begin to, to, to think about, uh, begin to do some math, uh, people uh, start associating you with math. And uh, I wouldn't say that I was necessarily natural at math, but, but having done it from a young age, I think, uh, uh, I think it was uh, it certainly built in me. Well, my dad was a professor of uh, political science, uh, it, it, and uh, I guess when I was a kid, I thought I wanted to be like him. I do sort of do what he did, but do it in mathematics. So that's that's when I thought, okay, I, I wanted to be a mathematician of the academic variety. Well, my research area is uh, geometric combinatorics uh, and applications to the social sciences. And so when I say geometric combinatorics, I'm thinking of problems that have uh, a combinatorial flavor uh, that involve geometric objects, right? So if, if you uh, want to know, um, it, you know, if, if, if I ask you to look at a, a cube, and ask how many faces does the cube have, you would say it has six faces, right? That's a combinatorial question involving a geometric object. And one of the problems I've studied, for instance, is uh, how can you break up a cube into triangles or break up a cube into tetrahedra? Uh, and in, uh, how can you break up a, a d-dimensional cube into d-dimensional tetrahedra, right? And what's the minimum number that it takes? That's a question that I've, I've studied. That's an example of a kind of question you might ask yourself in, in my field. And one of the, the cool applications of the work that I, I do, uh, that I'm interested in, is uh, involving problems in the social sciences. So you might ask the question, how, how can you uh, cut a cake fairly? That's a question that involves um, people interacting. And uh, one of the neat things is that math enters into the modeling of, of people's preferences. Uh, and so that involves an area of math known as game theory. Uh, and I'm often interested in uh, the geometric uh, objects that arise uh, from a question uh, that you might ask uh, in a social science context. Yeah, I guess struggle is, um, is something I think is really common experience uh, in mathematics. I mean, certainly on a small scale, every time you study a problem, uh, you have to struggle a little bit, at least, to try to, to make headway on it. Uh, and so, um, and so that, of course, that's, there's always struggle there. Um, I guess um, when I was in high school, thinking I wanted to do math for a living, uh, I, I remember my dad checked out a book uh, uh, from the library on Fermat's Last Theorem, which I was fascinated by because I was, you know, interested in number theory. And, and it was a graduate text in math and, you know, one of these yellow Springer books and you know, of course, I couldn't understand anything after the first chapter, right? Like the first chapter was an introduction, and then they started talking about all these constructions that I had knew nothing about. Uh, every every once in a while, I could you know understand something here and there, but it did seem to me like very daunting and intimidating, uh, and I worried, oh no, you know, would I ever be able to grasp that? Um, and so that that's always a challenge, I think. Now, of course, I'm used to seeing that when I encounter something I don't understand. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier since I've had those experiences to say, I don't understand this yet, right? Or if I put my mind to it, I can, I can do it. But you know, at that time, I think it was intimidating. Um, a, uh, a second uh, experience I had was when I went off to graduate school and I encountered all these, um, these other students who came from you know, these, these big you know, Ivy League schools and stuff like that. And, uh, and I, and they had a uh, much uh, stronger preparation than I did. I didn't take as many classes as they did as an undergraduate. And so that was another time where I really wrestled with the difference between, um, uh, between preparation uh, and, um, and uh, you know, mathematical uh, uh, ability and, and sort of the distinguish, distinct, trying to distinguish between the two is something I had to, to wrestle with. Also had to wrestle with, how much my identity was going to be wrapped up in uh, in my uh, performance, uh, and whether I could be doing math for the right reasons. Um, so that you know, these are all big questions, right? Like it's very easy 
if you, if you show any sign of being good at math, you get used to the idea of being good at it. And then when you're not good at it, you begin to worry like, oh no, maybe I'm not as good as I thought. And you know, in reality, I, I think people would enjoy math much more if they just stopped thinking about how they're performing at it. You know, like if, if you just decide if you enjoy it or, or don't enjoy it. I'll, I'll, I'll mention two things, I guess. So one thing is in, just in terms of research, I, I am uh, um, um, pretty, uh, pretty excited about a result that I proved with uh, a student. Um, which generalizes something called Sperner's lemma to, to polytopes. Uh, and, uh, and so that, you know, in terms of what I think about, like, you know, which of the results, the things that I proved that do I feel most um, proud of? I guess that's one of the things that I think, you know, I, it, it's turned out to have lots of applications. Uh, it's very interesting and beautiful and it, the way it generalizes some of the, the beautiful proofs of Sperner's lemma. Yeah, so that's one. Uh, and then uh, the other, I think, is this book, Mathematics for Human Flourishing, that I wrote for the general public that tries to paint an inclusive vision of, of what math is and who it's for and, and why anyone should learn it. And, you know, I, I guess I guess I, I look to that as something that I feel, you know, I feel honored or privileged to have had the, 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 the opportunity to shape public dialogue about mathematics. Uh, and, you know, I worked a couple of years on that book, you know, so there's a lot of blood and sweat that went into it. And so, um, so in terms of thinking about, you know, how my contributions, that's probably one thing that I think um, will probably reach more people than any of my research papers will. So uh, I feel, uh, I feel grateful to have had that opportunity. Yeah, I uh, had a, an undergraduate professor who was very influential, uh, who I looked up to because uh, he was an excellent teacher and, uh, and I, you know, every time he taught a course, I would take it, you know, that kind of thing. It'd be like, because, because he was such a phenomenal teacher. I mean, he was somebody who would get everybody involved in, in the class thinking. Um, one of the classes I took was inquiry-based learning, uh, 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 style of teaching where we proved the theorems for ourselves and discuss them in class. So that was very, very uh, influ influential to me. It still influences the way that I teach. Uh, and then uh, another, another person who was really influential to me is, is the, the chair uh, at Harvey Mudd who hired me into the job. Uh, he was a good role model, uh, helped me, show me the ropes of the profession and, uh, and, uh, and you know, helped give me confidence uh, in when I didn't really have that much confidence. Yeah, I guess the biggest piece of advice I would give uh, a budding mathematician is to um, not do math for the wrong reasons. And what I, what I mean by that is don't do it for the glory. Don't do it uh, because you're going to have a theorem named after you. Do it because you find it enjoyable. You find it um, something that you can't stop thinking about when you're not doing it. Um, you know, I, I go back... And think about the time you know when things got really hard in graduate school and I was thinking about quitting and I realized when I uh, you know if I quit doing a math PhD I'd still always love math in some way like there'd be some part of my life that I you know would want to engage with it and that sort of told me I had an innate interest and drive and in in, in, uh, in persisting and so um, I, I would say try not to derive your identity from uh, comparing yourself to other people, I think that's a huge, uh, a huge um, trap uh, because uh, nothing's ever going to be good enough uh, and uh, it won't satisfy you in the end. But what will, I think, is, uh, is uh, the power of beautiful experiences that you have and doing math, uh, both uh, alone but also with others, uh, the friendships that you form in the community of like-minded uh, mathematicians, people that you enjoy being with uh, and talking uh, about ideas, but also talking about life with. Uh, and so that's what, that's what I would encourage you to do is, is, is find uh, a, a groups of people who are, are like-minded and who you uh, enjoy uh, spending your professional life working with.